uh, Entz. 66 to 29 Entz. So Entz definitely has the community's favor. Uh, again, you know, if you're a newer viewer, I understand if you, you maybe don't know Entz's name very well, but if, if you've been watching for more than three seasons, I think there's a lot of love out there for Entz as a team. So not terribly surprised by that. Absolutely. I think that this is going to be a real test for Empire as well. You know, they came into DreamHack Winter and a lot of people thought that they could win the whole darn thing, and they didn't. In fact, they actually fell shorter than I think a lot of people anticipated. They got absolutely crushed by G2 on the way to G2 getting to the finals in DreamHack Winter, and it was Empire. I think a lot of people expected that one to be really, really close. Didn't work out that way. So we'll see what they're able to do against Enz, who came off a very hot match yesterday, and I think surprised a lot of people, especially with the way that they think that Lestream has a pretty high ceiling on this team. So... Ents getting their ban out of the way quite quickly. Empire thinking a little bit more about it. It's going to be Habana from Ents and Ying from Empire. Interesting. I'm also somewhat surprised, to be honest, that Habana was the one banned and not Ash. You talked about it earlier. Joystick does get counterbanned with the Ash specifically. And actually, it has been proven to work well against Joystick. With, when he's not on Ash, he still frags, but not nearly as much. So... Interesting that Ents decided to get rid of Habana instead. Mira being taken out by Empire, and uh, Echo will be the final ban. Both the Japanese operators eliminated by Ents, at least from this game, and then Ying and Mira, as you noted, from Empire here. Now, I think one of the reasons why you leave Ash open is because Slebin can always fulfill that role, That's too. That's true. You don't want to take that away from Ents, and I mean... Yesterday, Slebin looked like an absolute monster on that roll because he was getting droned in who was, repeatedly. Who was it at, uh, at DreamHack Winter? Was it Doki? Who was uh, the the, uh, the joystick slayer? I want to say it was Doki. From Vexed? Yeah, 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 it was Doki. The Scott? Yeah, and he was, he was, every time we saw him and Joystick go up against each other, it was Doki who, who was winning on attack and defense. And Doki was playing the same roles. He was playing the, uh, the Ash Jaeger. Pretty much countering uh, joystick. So if you can if you can bring someone to the table who fulfills the same roles but does it better, uh, then there you go. There's your counter. That's how counters work. That is how counters work, Parker. I am explaining how power, how counters work. That is what Defenders, happens. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defeated. We're playing on consulate. Batters. It's going to be a middle floor defense first. Interesting. That does happen. Uh, consulate uh, often talked about is that you can defend anywhere here and you'll be plenty comfortable there are some teams who do not like to go to the newest bomb site but uh, it's starting to get worked into the meta just a little bit more uh, however slowly I, I i don't i still don't think it's considered to be one of those viable bomb sites and that's of course over here by uh, where scyther's drone is uh in the visa and then right above or actually no right below but you have to play above you have to defend it from above 10 seconds to go i know do you do you parker I feel like it. Excellent drone economy from Empire for the time being. They're going to keep all five alive as we head out of the prep phase and into live action, which will obviously aid them. And of course, you see how scary an Ash main or a Twitch main or a Zofia main are when they've got an army of drones behind them. The joystick will throw up a drone himself. It's going to be admin office upstairs as the very first place that you try to take control of. Now, when you are attacking the bomb site on the second floor, or when you're attacking on the main floor, admin office can be contested in a number of ways by certain teams, usually with a mirror window inside of the cafeteria area. That's up top. That is the window that Joystick, or actually the wall that Joystick is looking directly at as the window Attack right next to it. Bomb. There you go. But there will be no admin control up top, which will essentially allow Empire to be able to take half of that second floor. The impediment that they're going to get is going to come by means of that projector room over top, which is where the drone is of Joystick right now, nailing down Bonesy's smoke. And Bonesy's going to start with the gas canisters. That's pretty early to start popping those. Only a minute gone in the round, so that's great efficiency from Empire to trigger those already. And uh, that's the second one already. Ah, uh, that's just Weirdly inefficient for Boonsie, and he's also eaten some damage, so it's not looking good. I don't know what Joystick was just intending to do with that breaching round. I thought it was trying to take the castle barricade on the double door, but it looks like it missed because the barricade is still there. A loss of drones from Empire will not be that detrimental as the first kill goes to Shockwave, but he gets traded off. What? As Slevin just dives out, but Wilkie giving some covering no. fire with the artillery of Maestro and Shate is there, and all of Empire is falling apart. 
as the Empire will burn in front of Ence's very eyes. Scyther and Karzeka will square off in a 2v4 with a minute to go. So there's still time for Empire to be able to recover, but it's Ence very firmly taking command of the driver's seat, or at least taking control of the match. Where is Levin? How did he make it out of that situation? Cannot believe he did not get refragged on that run out. Scyther and Karzeka, the last two for Empire, and they're pretty far away from each other, unable to support. You can see that Karzeka is going to start moving towards Visa. As he's going to have to meet up with his teammate, but uh, there's not enough time for him to go all the way outside. And uh, it looks like they're just going to have to run their own game. Scyther just blind peeking as he doesn't have any drones it seems to support himself. Shate's gonna get a goo mine kill onto Karzeka. The DMR does not fail Scyther though, and he's able to get one, but not two. Slevin, who previously was all the way outside, coming back into the building and getting the final kill. An excellent round for the newest player on Ents. He had some great assists and good support there as well. You saw that after he took the gamble to jump out the window, it was Wilkie, who was basically his guardian angel as he got pushed, which allowed Slebin to be able to get back into the building. All the while, I'd imagine that Empire's comms were uh, quite lively, I would say. Is oh, yeah. Sate able to come in and capitalize on the pandemonium that was happening? in their various VoIP program that they were communicating with. And Ence will take round number one. Now, I know that we say that maps are often defender-sided. By and large, the attackers defense are actually winning spot. more rounds than the attackers on most maps as of late. Well, And it, the defense should be winning. It's hmm. more remarkable when the attackers win. There's only one real map where the attackers win more often than not. It's typically coastline, but even then, it's been kind of changing. But Consulate is actually one of the, has become one of the more defender-sided maps as of late. Climbing up there with Clubhouse and Villa. So, ends winning these rounds are good. The Operator bans obviously matter here. But I would guess that if ends can run up the score, that they'll have a tough time when Empire goes on to defense in the second half. Well, if that's, the, if that's true, then, I mean, we've only Five seen defender-sided maps today. Clubhouse, Villa, Villa, Consulate. So, I mean, I'm not exactly surprised by that, but yeah, it's definitely an interesting thing to note. Empire are going to be attacking the top floor now, and they will start on the east end. As per usual, you're going to clear out that admin office. Once you have admin office in your corner, you could focus forward, as you don't have to work too hard to isolate your flanks. You only have to shut down those staircases, and they're pretty easy to block up. Now, worried about an A balcony run out. Uh, Empire really could just put somebody on that balcony to put their minds at ease, but not going to expend that warm body. I'm going to choose to focus them instead on clearing out admin, which they have full control of now. Just starting to drone into sight. And they know that there are two players playing inside a projector, which is going to be difficult to deal with. At the same time, there's not a lot of presence on Big Desk, which means Long Desk is an easy push if played correctly. They do have smokes in hand as you can see, and the Gujmats from the lifeline. So that's a good amount of disruption that can be utilized to um, assist a push down long desk. However, it does not seem that Empire wants to rush their play right now. They're just trying to feel out this defense first. You hear the logic bomb ring in the background now as we approach that halfway mark, and it's been a bit of a quiet round, all things considered, especially given the tempo that's been set by the teams today. So. Just a bit of deliberance on the side of Empire as they look to try to entry. And this site plays out very differently to the lobby depending on where you choose to attack from. Scyther will grab kill number one and Slevin, who was so important for his team, will be sidelined for the remaining minute of this round. He'll also eliminate the ability for a bandit to wreak havoc as a three speed with a pretty fantastic gun. Shot. Got some good positioning here, but he's got to be careful when he goes to, for this peak. It's all up to information. Someone needs to drone him into this site so he can get the kill on Boonsty, who's playing directly behind the bomb. But, oh, some missed shots there, and Boonsty is going to finally go down to Shock. Took him a while, but he finally got it done, and in a two versus five, this looks to be an Empire round. Chate's in a power play position, though. He could potentially lock up Long Desk, which is going to be a location that is very heavily trafficked from Empire when they go for that final push. It's all going to come down to him winning his fights. And oh no, the smoke caught by an ADS. That is going to put 
a kink in the plan for Scyther and make this push so much more difficult. They knew there was an ADS there, though, because the frag grenade from the buck didn't get tossed out. On the floor is Scyther. Shate will shut him down, and Shock is there to finish off the rest of Shate, meaning Gomfi will start snapping off. He's going to take out Joystick, but he's going to have some coverage on the window of Connector, and that'll be all she wrote for Ents. In that round, a good equalization from Empire and great window control with no fear of runouts from Ents to pick them off as they hung vulnerable, just raining down gunfire into the sight of Ents. So, good job there to Empire. I like that they had some opportunities that were presented. Clearly, from their drone work, they could see that there were some, some positions, like Long Dash, for example, that maybe could have easily been pushed into. But they didn't rush themselves. They played the angle game. They played the slow game. Crossfires were established, and Ents gave away picks. So, good job to Empire with the patience there. Props for that. Now, it's going to be a basement Attack defense for Ents moving bomb. forward, and... They're going to do a little bit of moonwalking here just off of the spawn, and it very likely means that their extremely amazing moonwalking is going to cause us to come back to our lovely faces and uh, wait a little bit before we get everything rolling again. I was doing my impression of you. Was that the... Was it like... More robotic. I don't remember how I did it, honestly. It was, it was a great gift, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was a pretty good gift. That was a long time ago, though. I mean, but yeah, so uh, they were too they were too impressive with the dance. They I mean, they caused our, our host to, to crash, so that happens from time to time, I guess. That's not what happened. It was a bug. We don't know what it was. But yeah, 1-1 one, one right now. We're going into the basement. It's going to be uh, Ents uh, trying to defend that bottom floor. It's definitely... Uh, Definitely an interesting site to defend. Uh, most of these rounds that we've seen so far here on Consulate have been pretty clear cut. Uh, nothing too complicated to talk about, to be honest. The way that uh, Empire went to attack the uh, top floor just now was pretty much the same way they attacked the middle floor. The difference was, of course, that uh, Ents didn't have anywhere to fall back to because the bomb site was upstairs instead of downstairs. So, um, yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot of deviation. I mean, the first round, a lot of what really gave Ents the ability to bust that round wide open was the run out from Slebin and then the covering fire to try and get him back into yeah. the building. And Empire could not rotate to the spots they needed to, and I don't think they were anticipating essentially the tank commander himself, a man in the big guns, and just absolutely shredding all of the members of Empire as they tried to get close to Slevin and his position revealed, but still Empire couldn't recover from that. This round, I think the second round went a lot more according to plan. There was no pressure onto those windows, as I said. You allowed a buck to play upside down the smoke inside of the site, could not get anything, didn't even seem to expend a toxic canister to maybe try and uh, mask some, his position or get some cover, etc. It was just... Yeah, last time he uh, last time he was way too quick to use the cut toxic canisters. Second round, he didn't use any of them. Um, but I don't think that's really his fault necessarily. I think the main problem was that it was the A balcony pressure went uncountered. There are a number of ways that you can get someone who's on that A balcony, uh, especially if they're upside down repel. Uh, if they're upside down repel, I mean, you can run out from the piano window and get them pretty easily. Uh, you can run out from the front door, but I wouldn't advise it. You can run out from the bottom of Visa stairs. I mean, there's a lot of options to deal with that uh, player on the A balcony. And I think the real problem is that uh, Shock was so patient. He didn't jump the gun with any of his shots. He didn't give away his position, and thus Ents was not given enough time to act against him. But overall, it mostly comes down to the established crossfires from Empire. Again, and the patience. They didn't rush any of their plays. They had opportunities. They didn't seize them because they knew that they had their game plan and they stuck to it. Right. Let's just take a second, though, to talk about something that's coming up after this matchup. No matter whether it's a draw, whether it's a win for Ents, or whether it's a win for Empire, the APAC qualifiers for the last spot from their region for the six Invitational coming up in exactly a month's time, actually. February 11th is where the group stages begin, if, I were, if, if my brain works correctly, and today happens to be January 11th. Yep, so that means that we are a month... I left my watch at home. He bought a pocket watch, by the way. I like pocket watches. 
It was really nice. You'll bring it out at some point on a broadcast. But anywho. No, I won't. APAC <laughs> qualifiers are coming up at the conclusion of this broadcast, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be having the APAC quals to determine which of the four teams that will be competing. Something funny? Yeah. One of the four teams competing will punch their ticket to Montreal, joining Nora Rengo and Fnatic as the third representative of APAC. A bit sad for Xavier. They were supposed to be going and representing Southeast Asia, but due to visa issues, it's going to be Arrow Wolf going. So we'll see what can happen out of that. But yeah, don't go anywhere. It's going to be happening at around 11.30 local time here. So we're about an hour and 15-ish minutes off from when it's going to go live. So yeah, stay tuned. Please tune into the APAC Quals. We're going to be having them both today and tomorrow. It'll be an exciting series of matches played in the land setting on location. So, yeah, don't don't go anywhere. And then on top of that we're going to be we're going to be back with with Pro League. I think I think we got NA tomorrow and then we have NA on Sunday or Monday. I have to I'd have to check. The only thing that you know what this you know what this super month has done? Hmm. The super month has completely thrown my idea yeah, of like so what days are out of the window. I don't yeah, we, I didn't know today was Friday by the way until I literally woke I thought it was up. Thursday. Today's Friday. Oh. So yeah, we point proven. We we wake up and then we work and then we and then we sleep and then we and we work, right? I literally, I literally the, like get off from work and I'm like amount of hours until next match. But and honestly, then I, then I adjust myself. I do the same morning. exact thing with my uh, with my alarm. Whenever yeah. as soon as I finish, I'm like I set an alarm. It's like this is when you need to wake up yeah. and go in. But it's actually honestly it's nice because we we came off such a long hiatus of of pro league it is, and it's you know getting the getting right back into it. I just action 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 action. Honestly, it's nice. It is. It is nice to. Get I like. Back. I like being able to cast like back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. Don't you don't forget things. Uh, it's a lot easier for things to stay fresh in your mind. Not mm -hmm. that you're necessarily forgetting them, but just that there's there's details and things like that, and just they can't see that from that far. I know they can't see. It's really small. Is no no. It's just a normal. I I took printer paper. I don't have a notebook anymore. I had a notebook for last season, and I need a new one. He has a notebook. I envy his notebook. It's a nice notebook. It's fine. It's, it's nice. But this is um, paper. It, it's it's good to have these mini games back to back. It's entertaining for the viewers. It's good for the. T I mean, it's kind of good for the teams because they get to be able to play back to back to back. You got to feel for them that they don't necessarily have as much prep time, but that's okay yeah. because then when you don't have the most prep time, you see the good teams will be able to make these things up on the fly, and I think that's exciting because that's not necessarily something you see all the time. But speculation can end now as we will proceed back into consulate in just a matter of seconds to get underway with round number three between Team Empire and Ents. And they're all tied up at one apiece. Ents is going to continue on defense for the next four rounds. So they're selecting lobby right now. Um, they went basement last time, so that's weird. But okay, lobby it is, it seems. All right. Um, I didn't know you could do that. Also, yeah, it's. Oh, okay. Oh, so we're just we're just being told. Okay. So a lot of confusion. The score was wrong. The site was wrong. We're just now being told. And it's one. Yeah. Garage. All right. Okay. So there was a round played off stream. Yeah. Our apologies for not being uh, made aware of this. There was a round played off stream that ends one. And now we go back to lobby because and yeah. opens lobby bomb. again. So okay, that means that uh, Ents has won middle floor and basement. They won middle floor the first time around, which means they get to go Lava back here because it has been three rounds. So cool, cool, cool. All right, we're all, we're all on the same page now. All right, uh, so yeah, I would love to pick apart what happened on the bottom floor, but we have no idea. And. Uh, We'll see them set themselves up here on the mid now. They've got a decent selection of operators like the two ACOGs because we're playing on the middle floor and there's a lot of long angles. The castle, of course, we saw that the first time they went to mid floor was very useful, especially on the top floor roam. It's a big part of how Ants won this last time. They were really good at roaming upstairs. They did lose some manpower for free, essentially, but at the same time, they delayed for a good amount and uh, they were able to get good uh, or fragging power down in the middle floor when it was needed because they were 
not too worried about that vertical pressure. Now, that was last time. This might be different. You see the same setup pretty much though from Ensign. We'll see how Empire chooses to handle it. Shock again, repelling upside down on this, uh, what activate. would be a balcony if the site were upstairs. Very powerful position that he's been able to do a lot of good work from. Drone work being done up top. Once again, Empire is likely going to endeavor to try and capture this projector room above. And it proved to be quite a difficult thing on the previous attack for Empire onto Lobby. And like we'd mentioned during the break, part of the reason for this was because of the run out from Slevin. Shock will toss in a frag grenade, because there's no ADS on the board for Ents, as they have not run a Jaeger. So the projectiles and throwables from Empire will get maximum value. However, nobody from Ents will sustain any damage. It's Goffy playing by the opening uh -oh. of a connector. Oh, he sees on drone. He's going to pick away at the buck, and Shockwave will get upright after taking about 80 damage Attackers from Goffy. A good bit of eyesight there for him to be able to catch that. Yeah, and free damage. I mean, you can't hate that from Ensis' side. Could get the final kill, and there it is. Yeah, Shock with a nade prime will go down. That is unfortunate for the buck. Lots of utility just being wasted, and some of the most important utility, especially when you're going for vertical control. Joystick gonna hit some shots, but miss some others, and because of that, Bonesy or Bonesy will stay alive, coming out of connector. And his teammate, Gomfi, taken down by Karzeka, who is not expecting any pressure from the projector balcony. Still holding that angle tightly as the rest of Empire begins their assault on the bottom floor, but it will be cut to pieces by Shate as he just tears through Scyther on a very long angle. That Legion's gun doing good work, even despite the fact that its damage had been reduced very recently. Empire losing their set of smokes as well to Scyther going down, but they still have one in Shepard's hands as the Dokubi will need to remain alive and well with Karzeka at the front door. They're in good position. Oh no, Joystick seeing Wilkie. As Slebin takes out Karzeka, both teams will lose a member. But Karzeka is not as detrimental as the loss of Wilkie in that post plant that could be done so well with a Maestro in play. Joystick still above, just crouch walking through the upstairs and trying to take control of the hatches. Logic Bombs will give away positions, and there he is, Joystick unimpeded oh! with a big double kill. Snapping on Nabootsi and transferring over to Slebin. Around that. Around that Empire looked like they might lose, they actually end up walking away with a victory from. This match has been as close as we expected it to be going 2-2 two -two in the very beginning. I am I am impressed mm -hmm. uh, with the way that they have... Uh, the way they've come out swinging on both sides oh. of, uh, of the team. So oh. um, overall, I think one of the big issues there, both members of Empire and Ents just simply not paying attention to vertical control and those hatches being worked so well from Empire above. Yeah, Joystick also happened to be in the right spot at the right time throughout that round, it seemed. Um, got some really opportunities to kill, so great job to him to uh, being able to secure those for his team. Now, going back to the top four, last time we were here, Empire got their first round win. So Ents really do need to sure up their defense of this floor. A big part of why they were able to secure this round was that defense over by Projector. Was a little bit lackluster. And Shock, again, did so much work as the Buck, repelling upside down on that A balcony to secure control. From there, Empire also got a lot of crossfires elsewhere on the map, just playing Long Desk on the Spiral Stairs and from Connector. Every single one of those crossfires allowed for pretty much nowhere that Ents could maneuver. And every time they attempted to do so, they were caught off and picked off one at a time. So, Ents need to find some more stable anchor positions in order to get a win here on this round. I'm actually kind of surprised that Ents has not bothered to try to hold Admin at all Good through point. these four rounds. Not even the smallest bit have they attempted to hold that part of the map. And they've just, I mean, it's not necessarily map control. Having Admin doesn't really always do that much, as a lot of teams will just concede it time and time again. But Empire is throwing in one drone into Admin, and that's about it. And then Joystick is swinging on him. Yeah. You're not wasting any time as Ents. Uh, you're not wasting any of Empire's time 
by having somebody play inside of printer or having yeah. somebody playing over by uh, the cubicles in the in the northeast corner of the of the room. It's puzzling. A big difference maker for me uh, in terms of Ence's defense was they won on the the uh, middle floor. The reason I think that they were able to win on the middle floor is because they had fallback positions. You know, they didn't have to die hard on their you know initial hold because they could roam. Here on the top floor, they're kind of roaming, but at the same time, uh, their anchor positions are being confronted directly by that admin presence. Put two people on admin, and that's going to, if nothing else, delay Team Empire a lot and limit their options when they go for the anchor push. So it's a... Uh, it's definitely something that I, I think I'm with you. They could they could utilize the lack of the mirror could possibly be prompting that, but I'm not entirely certain. It's something that could be know. asked of it on either of these teams. Should we have a winner's interview? Hmm. But it's been a lot of work from Empire to drone everything out. I don't know how relevant this information is going to be. As Shock lights up the table, but doesn't actually connect with Bonesy at all. It's going to be a joint effort as there's Karzeka from below and good coordination from two members of Empire to take Bonesy out of the fight. But Joystick has been cooled off by Shate. So both teams will lose a pretty important member of their team. The Ash Main from Empire will fall, but you don't necessarily have that same plant denial. Even though Bonesy had expended those toxic canisters earlier on. Yeah. He has been using his toxic canisters quite early in these rounds, but at the same time, he's had one of the most high-pressure positions to play in this entire bomb site. And uh, Empire have been very proficient at dealing with him in that exact spot. Going into the dying seconds of the round, though, Empire are in a good position to vault into A, but uh, they're going to have to start doing it pretty quickly here. Scyther laying down the smoke, and it will not be caught by the ADS this time around, which is going to allow for easy entry into A, and a sub-10 seconds plant in the site. Karzaka goes down to Slevin, though, from below. The C4 has missed. Wilkie also gets one for himself, though. Shock uses the shield to take down Wilkie. Over by a long desk, Scyther gets a free kill because Shate is not checking his corners, and because of that as well, Cypher will down Slevin. It's all up to Gomfi. Possibly take out Shock on the balcony before challenging Sh uh, Scyther, but no, he's going to shift his priorities and uh, he will lose the round because of it. Great round there between Shock and Scyther. Perfect crossfire in the post plan. A round that was going really well for Ents, then turned towards going really well for Empire, and it held that way, and there was a bit of a scary situation when that C4 went off below. They got the plant off in the nick of time because you ended up with the Dokabi dying right as that diffuser went down. Scyther actually four went to kill earlier into that connector, if you saw. He knew that there was a body playing in connector, but he needed to get the smokes out more importantly. So he basically decided that utility was more important than securing that kill for the rest of his team, and it was the right call to make. Yep. So Scyther, that kind of thing often gets looked over, depending on what happens amidst the Attacking action and the fury that takes place in any given round. Can. But that decision from Scyther led to the smokes being able to cut off Ents, and as Ents realized they couldn't push through the smoke. They had to change. The rest of Empire was there to catch them. And it's the type of thing that you're not really going to see on the scoreboard. It pays massive dividends. Empire have at least drawn even through the first half of this matchup with a 3-2 scoreline, and they have done excellent with their drone economy. A team that not always known for a lot of droning in Challenger League have been doing quite a bit of it since coming into Pro League, especially in DreamHack Winter as their first real test against constant Pro League level competition. And it has been Empire who have been, I think, exceeding expectations on that front. But they have done an excellent job of keeping their drones alive through the prep phase and stashing them for use later on. Yeah, Empire has definitely evolved a lot as a team, just in general. And I think in information gathering, that's one of their, uh, one of their more notable improvements. Now, going on to the basement, we didn't see the last time Ents defended this, but they were successful, so the scoreboard says. So we're about to find out how they managed to pull that off, I'm sure, and if Empire will have a counter in play based on the last time they attempted to attack this. Now, in terms of kit, Team, Emper Team Empire have brought a Thermite, but they have no option for Habana because she's banned, and they haven't brought a Thatcher, which means they're going to have to use vertical control to get the Mute Jammers that are potentially on the garage wall. Gonfi will be taken out by the Yellow Stairs thanks to some excellent droning from Empire and Joystick, the excellent shot to follow up said droning. 
He's going to open up a rotation cutoff for the Visa Stairs. Very wise to cut that off and uh, allow his team some peace of mind when they're pushing towards Piano. It's a bit reckless by Gonfi to just toss his life away and didn't really waste any time in doing so. It took about 40 seconds, I think, for Empire to be able to figure out where Gonfi was playing. And it clears up yellow stairs as well to a certain extent. So that's a big win for Joystick, who's just going to be perched over top of Visa stairs, just watching to see if somebody's going to push up. This could be a coordinated effort, actually. If you don't need the Ash for any partic uh, particular um, entry or uh, roam hunt, then she is probably the best operator to be on flank watch. The reason being, of course, she's three speed. She gets right back into the action like that. I mean, you don't really need to think too much about it. If it's a flank watch near your actual push, then maybe somebody else. But if it's a flank watch on the far end of the map, yeah, pick a three speed. Makes sense. Vertical control is established here for Team Empire, and they've managed to get themselves another kill. This one on to Slevin, who is roaming in the bathroom. And because that vertical control is established, the Mute Jammers are taken out, and Thermite is opened up garage wall. This is where things get particularly hairy for Ents, given the fact that they have a massive disadvantage in numbers in a 3v5, but Shate is in no position to rest easy. He's going to have what little cover sits above him, destroyed by the buck of Shockwave. And Karzeka will finish off Bonesy, leaving just Shate and Wilkie inside of sight trying to stop Empire as best as they can. But Karzeka's had a very impressive round, and he knows the position, but he can't capitalize on Deshate. He'll pull out the pistol instead and look to see if the Maestro will emerge. It's going to continuously take some damage as Karzeka gets ever closer. But every time he does take damage, it'll be given away. Diffuser goes down, and Shate will get one kill, but largely impactless as Hatch Control is sitting in the hands of Empire from above. You've still got Joystick on this flank watch, but they're not going to need him as it was Shockwave and Karzeka being able to lock this out in an impressive round from Empire and an impressive set as they'll take the attacking side four to two and Diffuser down both rounds five and six. We're on season nine. That is correct. And ends one season six. It feels like yesterday. But it was so long ago. That was in Sao Paulo? Yeah. That was such a long time ago. Empire doing a great job here. I really have to commend their teamwork. It has been tremendous. Uh, every single thing that they're trying to accomplish is done quite succinctly. I really do like the way that they're accounting for everything. A lot of teams will overlook things like watching the Visa Stairs flank. And, you know, you could make the argument that, well, Joystick didn't need to do anything from that flank watch. He did not need to get any kills. But at the same time, it just shows a thorough team. And I love, I love to see that. I do like to see that. It means they're showing respect to Ents, and they're accounting for everything they know could potentially happen. Uh, and, yeah, no, oh, it's just, it's nice. I like to see it. I also appreciate how efficiently they took control of the top floor and then to took control of Piano. They didn't do it in one fell swoop, as some teams will often will. They decided to do it in a step-by-step -step process, and uh, they didn't lose control of anything that they gained control of later in the round. Good job to Empire, and that's what allowed them to isolate the site so efficiently and deny any potential Hail Marys from Ents. Also like this setup. This is interesting. We've seen a couple teams do this with Evil Eyes before, especially in Oregon in the laundry room basement downstairs. Usually where you see a mirror, team will shoot out the top of the uh, laundry room closet and they'll put a Evil Eye cam up there, which will give you a pretty good viewpoint all the way in. Mm -hmm. Seen similar things on Coastline as well. Haven't really seen that much of it with Consulate, so it's nice to actually have it emerge just as another as a, another site where you have tons of opportunities. And Maestro does tend to get banned quite a bit, especially against certain teams, so not really uh, not really always able to see uh, the best that teams can do with him. So Gomfi now on Ash, not Slevin. It's going to be Slevin taking the role of Thatcher. So fragging potential with that L85 as Empire will get paralyzed for about five seconds as those Dokubi calls will ring out and everybody will have to stop to turn off their phones. Look at that. Gomfi just uh -oh. peeks over the hatch and there's Joystick from below. Shepard opening up the drop, allowing Joystick to drop down and now head over towards the Visa side of things. It was good coordination with Karzeka down below, also calling it, and oh, a beautiful peek 
from Joystick, and Wilkie gets sent back to the Shadow Realm as that Jaeger is just going to continuously rotate. <laughs> It'll be very difficult for Ents to be able to pin him down. Wilkie is from the Shadow Realm? I banished him to the Shadow Realm. Have you not heard that turn of phrase? <laughs> I didn't know that it was specific to Wilkie, but uh, I now do. It's not specific to Wilkie, it's just a good reference. Oh, okay. I, I don't know the reference part. Mm -hmm. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm ignorant to your reference. Okay, so... Gonfi on low HP, and Joystick also having taken quite a lot of damage. But at the same time, Empire have put so much pressure on Ents that while they have the control that they've been seeking, it feels like they've been through no man's land to get it and lost quite a lot of their power in the process. And they're continuing to lose that power. Every time they take an inch, it costs them. Slevin opening up using his breaching charge above the bomb site, but he takes damage as a result. Amazing how little has been accomplished by Ents in regards to this round. They're finally getting open those garage panels, but some teams will wait until the bitter end in order to do so. Shate engaging with Shockwave as Karzeka takes off Gonfi. Both teams will lose one, take the mute out of the equation. And finally, Ents can begin their assault onto these two open garage panels. Toxic Gas will await Bone C to see if he can push in with Karzeka still having a Nitro Cell in hand, but he's got pressure from above. The Nitro Cell will miss. He's got pushed it up from Slebin. Karzeka will fall, but Slebin gets taken down as well, finished off by Scyther's Evil Eye. Shepard takes out Shate, and Bonesy will have to abandon the plant and cannot get back on it. Frustration from the Thermite as Empire will just hide their remaining members. Knowing that time is ever on the side of the defense in those circumstances, and it'll be yet another round going in favor of Empire in the first of their defensive stint. Empire look in commanding form right now. Honestly, Ents just are not comparing. I mean, a lot of these fights that you would imagine could go the should go the way of Ents are actually going in the way of Empire, and that is, that it, it's, it actually reminds me a little bit of the uh, secret G2 match that we were watching earlier today. G2 were losing a lot of fights that they really should not have been losing, and it's not because necessarily they were uh, getting outplayed, it's it's more just missing shots, bad mistakes. Empire, on the other hand, though, jump off of critiquing Ents for a second, Empire is playing exceptionally well. Uh, and again, I really do appreciate how thorough they are being, not only on their initial clear, not on their information gathering, and the backup behind those drones that are clearing out the site, but also on locking down those flanks. Now on defensive side, they've managed to make Ents work for every single inch, and that was what I was putting out in the, in the middle of the last round. It's every single thing that Ents would take, whether it was top floor control, whether it was piano control, opening up the garage, ever, all of that God, stuff cost Ents either a life or some amount of damage on one Attack of their players. The and that Attack is what we wanted to see from Ents. That's what you were talking about when you brought up the lack of any admin presence when Ents was defending the top floor. Totally. Oh, that, and that, that, okay, so that just adds to it. That's just bad. They keep calling you and nobody's answering, Wilkie. Well, it's Joystick there that time. And you lose. One set of smokes. They still have Shate smokes available for them on Ents, as I'm sure the reverberations of that spawn peak on Nawilki will be felt throughout the course of this round. If Empire is successful here, it will be match point. So getting an early pick is crucial. And as you said, once again, no real admin presence at all, except for Joystick spawn peak. But they made Ents work for admin control. Now, even if they're not defending admin, it cost Ents a player. That's what we were talking about, that you need to make your enemy work for it. Because there's only so much you can actually defend on a map like Constant. It is a, it, if all things considered, it's a pretty shallow map in terms of uh, how much the attackers have to take control of. So something like, yeah, I'm in control. It's it's ground that you can work make work for you. And Joystick was capable of doing that here. Even if he wasn't playing in, in Admin for any prolonged amount of time. No, and obviously Wilkie's ability to stop the attack or the defenders for five seconds or longer with those phone calls, the ability for him to have also two smokes and have a, I mean, Dokubi's kit is not that strong as a fragger, but there's definitely fragging potential there, right? So that's, those are all things that you lose. And then on top of that, you also just lose a body in which you likely have a strategy revolving around five Attackers people being alive. Uh-oh. Joystick will find his second as he runs out and takes out Bonesy. That was the black Blackbeard that had engaged with Shockwave. Well, Joystick looks like he might actually be able to make it back, but Scyther is pinched by Slebin, and here we go. It looks like, finally, 
and execute. Shock will miss most of his shots, pull up the shotgun and just completely whip as Slebin picks up his second. Joystick grabbing a third before getting silenced by Gonfi, and there's life still in ends as there's many kills that occur in the very short span of 10 seconds. Trying to choke off the entry from Visa is Shepard. He's gonna come out and it doesn't look like he got it. Shate will be successful in his endeavor. But Karzeka takes him down. Diffuser as well, so Karzeka will need to work against Gomfi. As a doc, that's a perfect opportunity. He's still got one stim pistol as well to possibly juice himself up to 140 HP. Gomfi from below, waiting very patiently. At the bottom of Visa's stairs, Karzeka doesn't really know the exact location of where Gomfi is. Diffuser hits the halfway mark, and it's all up to the Ash to wait. Hearing the sounds of the dock from Attackers above, need to protect the diffuser. going to diffuse, and there you go, Gonfi pops up, and it's routine for Ents in the post plant. A bit anticlimactic, assuming that there would be action taking place, but the right call from Gonfi to just hide in Karzeka, being completely blind to the position, will give Ents a round that they desperately need, staving off match point on behalf of Empire. A very close round, though. It could have easily gone the way of Empire. You gotta give props to Slebin and Ents as a whole for coming back there after all those early picks from Joystick. We made note of how Joystick was able to get that early kill, which cost Ents when they were taking into admin office. There was also something he did after that, which is run out and take down the Blackbeard on A Balcony. How many rounds? Did Empire have somebody repelling on A Balcony and nobody from Ents did anything about it? Defender, I mean, it's, it was actually kind of comedic at, at some point when you have that Blackbeard on that window or, or, or Shock on the uh, Buck. I mean, he switched roles later, but either way, whatever he's playing, he did a lot of work from the about A Balcony. And just there, Empire, on the first attempt from Ents to repel on that Balcony, shuts it down. That's... Good situational awareness from Empire and good initiative. And it's a little, it's just, yeah. I'm very, I'm even more impressed with Ents that they managed to bring that round back, to be honest, because it should have been an Empire round. Well done, Slevin again, specifically. Now, it looks like it's gonna be the same site. Empire is aware of how close that round was, and they are confident to bring it back here in the second attempt. We'll see what they give us. I wonder if we're going to see a spawn peak this time around. Still time, but no, there's not going to be. But breaking a lot of windows, this is going to be just in ever-present in the back of Ensa's mind for the remainder of this matchup is be very careful with your approach because you never know what's going to happen. I think we got a good glimpse of it there with Shate just staring at the window for a solid five seconds, wondering, oh. Joystick does indeed go for the spawn peak. It doesn't work out this time around. The pair of Shate will be the ultimate victor in that battle. And you'll take Joystick, who had a 3K in the previous round, causing absolute terror in the hearts of Ents and their fans. Yeah, good job there to Shate, shutting down Joystick. So the risks that Empire have been taking, finally working against them. Props to Shate for landing the shot. Now, he's already made his way actually to Long Desk. This is impressive efficiency from uh, Ents. Actually managed to get, to, get, to get a kill and then working his way inside very quickly. You can see the uh, melee holes there in the connector wall and the bullet holes. The melee holes are used as a distraction so that the bullet holes will not be shot at. And Karzeka is hoping that somebody will peek into him and he'll land the shot. Knowing Karzeka, it's like... It's a good call here by Shepard just to watch the balcony over by the bomb site. A, knowing that there's going to likely be somebody on Repel there. Perfect place for Bonesy's Blackbeard to hang. But he's upside down, so he's not really in a position where he's vulnerable to the smoke. Now that he's touched down, this could be a good opportunity, but Shepard will miss his shots as Bonesy breathes in some of the toxic base. Oh no! Shate got finished off just a couple seconds earlier, but Gonfi will find shock. So Ents will regain a numbers advantage that they had for most of the first part of this round. Now, with Wilkie still alive, perfect time for those logic bombs to go off and keep everybody in place. Knowing that there's proximity on those sounds, oh, Bonesy almost gets the diffuser off, but he gets destroyed by Shepard because there's nobody there to cover. It was Gonfi, but Karzeka is able to cut him down. And Empire finds themselves in a massive advantage, still letting those phones ring. Waiting to see who from Ents will be the next one in. And it's going to be Wilkie with Scyther there. And oh my goodness. 
We'll go to match point with Shepard grabbing Slebin and Entz picked the wrong door to enter through. Good hold out there from Empire. Entz actually looked in better form going into that round, but uh, they could not make it work in the end. Now, the smoke used there was, I think, the biggest difference make because the shotgun blast actually... The shotgun blast actually downed the planter that time around. In the previous attempt, it didn't. Uh, I'm pretty sure, by the way, the reason that it didn't is that little desk that the uh, attacker was planting next to. And this time, the little desk was there as well. Just got a little bit more lucky with the pellets. I think it might be prudent uh, for Team Empire next time to defend that top floor to shoot the desk in advance. But... Uh, We'll see. We'll see what they decide to do. They might not actually make it back to the top floor, all things considered. In fact, I don't think they can. But, oh no, they can. But it's unlikely, considering how Empire has been playing. They might lock it out right here and now, seeing as how they're on match point, going down to the basement, a site that they are very comfortable on. The first bomb site they defended when they went to the second half, and they were successful here. The match on the line to see if Europe will continue to have yet another. Oh. 10 seconds left. What? Nothing? Nothing at all. Wow. Wow, Parker. I didn't see it until you brought it up. I didn't say anything. Okay, I kind of did, but whatever. I didn't say anything. It just looked did, like it looked, like it looked like a very weirdly uh, placed rotational. That's what I was commenting on, Michael. I wouldn't have. It looks like a. Yeah. Well, it's the same rotational that they opened up last time. I know. Parker. I know. It was good. It just it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't look like they were going to be able to get it this time. So good for them. But yeah, anyway, they got it. They did they got do it. it. They did it. They did it. They definitely did it. Anyway, going down on the garage, there's still opportunity for spawn peaks here. Ens is still going to be slow to approach the building, and you can see every single member of the team is <laughs> hugging cover as best as they can mm -hmm. and watching all of the windows. Admin control is not as important, obviously, for the defense when they're defending into the basement. Empire does have bodies on that second floor, and Consulate does tend to be one of a small number of sites where you're likely going to have presence on every single floor. Goffy's entry will be very short. He has 40 seconds into this match, 50 seconds, but a great C4 from Karzeka will eliminate Gumphy from play. That could have been a pre-placed. I think it was, considering it was an ash, and Gonfi looked to be moving. You could tell that he was moving probably in a sprint because his body flew so far from the initial explosion. Probably had that extra momentum. But, yeah, a little bit of a oversight there from Gonfi. Uh, you can't really blame him for not drawing out below, necessarily. I think it more falls to uh, Karzeka's excellent placement of the C4. Now, with that advantage established, Empire are poised to take this match right now. And Joystick's going to extend the advantage by taking out Slebin. That right there, that is inefficient droning from Ents. They did not check behind CEO desk, and all Joystick needed to do was wait for the opportunity and seize it. And he did just that. So now Ents find themselves in a corner on match point. It's not good. And that's also, that's also two of the main fraggers from Ents down, which is even worse, right? They will have a counter punch. There is Joystick, who was roaming, gets caught by Wilkie downstairs, not too far off site. He's assisted by the Logic Bomb. Is there still one left at Wilkie's disposal for whenever he a needs is to be able to here. try to not just give away the location of the defenders, but also freeze them for a moment or two. Ents will go back onto drones as they still try to figure out where exactly Empire is. Now, I don't think those two kills onto Ents came at the right time. And because of this, they didn't really know exactly where Empire's location was. Two bodies inside of the office will be met with a logic bomb. Shock pivots and he sees the thermite. This is a beautiful round for Empire as Karzeka gets in on the fun. And Shate will need to get the rest, but there's Karzeka. Excellent play. A huge round from the pulse. It just makes it absolutely routine. Empire will join Chaos as the only team to still be undefeated in EU Pro League. And they do so quite easily, actually, over ends. That was not as close, I think, as either you nor I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I thought we were going to go all the way to the draw, to be honest with you. I mean, at this point, the way that that round, or that match, rather, played out, it seems as though Empire might be Ents' kryptonite because it just is a different Ents that we're seeing playing.